Hello, everyone. Today, I'm going to help you with 6.10 homework. I'm going to teach you how to solve some of the problems in this homework. Uh, it's about trig values with calculators. So we're going to use our calculator to find these trig functions. First of all, uh, for this question, we are using degrees mode in our calculator. So let's make sure our calculator is in degrees mode first. So I go here and go to mode and check the third line over here. Gradient and degrees. If degrees is highlighted, that means your calculator is working with degrees. So we are good here. Now let's go to the first problem sine of 32. So we want to find what is sine of 32. I can easily use my calculator and find. So here I already have the bottom for sine. So I just do sine of 32 and simply it's going to give me the answer. Since I need to correct my answer into three decimal numbers, so this number 529991 is going to be written as 0 0.530. So the third decimal number will be rounded. But instead of writing 529, I'm going to write 530 here. Okay. So for the other primary functions like cosine, we will use our calculator to find the answer. But for reciprocal functions like cotangent, secant, and cosecant, we need to change them to the primary function because in our calculator we don't have for cosecant, secant, or cotangent. So we need to make some changes. Cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent. So instead of writing cotangent of one of 75, I'm going to write 1 over tangent of 75. So if I find this, function 1 over tangent of 75, that's equal to cotangent of 75. So I'm going to go to my calculator, then just write a, make a fraction here, 1 on top and in the bottom, tangent of 75. And the answer is this value, 0 0.267. Again, I can round this as 0. 270. I'm going to write 1 over, we know that secant is reciprocal of cosine. So 1 over cosine of 253.2. Cosecant is reciprocal of sine, so 1 over sine of 8. So the same way, we're going to solve the other problems. Let's go to the next problem. Here we want to find the degree uh, measure of the acute angle theta and correct that to three decimal places. So here I have cosine negative 1 of 0.475 and I'm looking notice that we have an inverse function. This is not reciprocal function, it's inverse function. Uh, for this one, I already have a button defined on my calculator, cosine negative 1. So I go second of whatever is this one, 0.45, and then it's going to give you the answer. So that's how you solve cosine negative 1. Uh, let's go to uh, next one, sine of theta is equal to 0 0.873. So in this case, the problem is given in this way. Sine of an angle is equal to this value. What is that angle? What is that angle? So I'm going to use the inverse function in this case. So I'm going to write theta is equal to sine negative 1 of 0, 8, 7, 3. And we already have the bottom defined for that. So we we'll just go here, find negative 1 of 0, uh, 873. And it's going to give us the answer. Okay, so 
double further. And now let's see how about the inverse of the reciprocal functions. Inverse of reciprocal functions is also a little bit different. <clears throat> so um, in this case, I have theta is equal to cotangent negative 1 of 1 1.756. I'm looking for theta. We know that we don't have any button defined on our calculator as cotangent negative 1. So let's change this form of the problem. I want to write if I have theta equal to cotangent negative 1, that means cotangent of an angle is equal to 1.756. And I know that cotangent is reciprocal of tangent. So instead of cotangent, I'm going to write 1 over tangent of theta equal to this value. Okay. Now, I'm going to write tangent of theta is equal to 1 over 1.756. So you see, I just used the a cross multiple and solve this for tangent of theta. Let me explain how I found this. I'm going to write that here. Um, 1 over tangent of theta equal to 1.756. I do cross multiple and from here uh, I can just switch these two so 1 is equal to 1 over 1.756 is tangent of theta. So that's how I can find tangent of theta. Okay, now I have still not found the theta. I need to find theta. So what is theta? It's equal to negative 1 of 1 over 1.756. So that's how I find inverse function of a reciprocal function. Basically, you don't have even have to do all these changes. You don't even need these. All you need to do is to write the reciprocal function of this. So instead of doing all these, I'm just going to write theta is equal to. What is reciprocal of cotangent is tangent. So I'm going to write tangent negative 1. And then also write the reciprocal of your argument. So I'm going to write 1 over 1.756. That's all you need to do. And you can use your calculator to find the answer. So um, second tangent of this fraction, 1 over 1.756. That is equal to this value, 29.66. Okay, so let's do another example here. Cosecant of theta is equal to this value. So what is theta? Theta is equal to cosecant negative 1 of 3.623. Once again, we don't have any button defined on our calculator for cosecant. But I know that cosecant is reciprocal of sine. So all I'm going to do is here to change cosecant to its reciprocal function. So I'm going to write sine negative 1. And whatever I have here in the argument inside the parentheses, just flip that. 3, 1 over 3.623. And now I can use my calculator to find. This problem that you see here, arc secant of 2.217. Arc secant is just another name for inverse function. So it could be written as theta is equal to secant negative 1. So arc, arc is just another name for inverse. It could be arc sine, arc cosine, and whatever. So if I write for you what is arc sine, that means basically what is sine negative 1. Arc tangent is tangent negative one. Just another kind of notation. Okay, so arc secant can be written as secant negative one, secant negative one of two point two one seven. 
So all I'm going to do here is write the reciprocal function for this one. Secant is the reciprocal of cosine. So cosine negative 1 of, and then flip inside the parenthesis, 1 over 2.217. And now I can use my calculator to find the answer. Now let's go to the next problem over here. Basically, we're doing the same thing that we did before, except that this time we are using the radian mode. So I go to my calculator and change the mode to radian. So I go mode and down here, stay on top of the radian and enter. Now radian is highlighted. So from this point on, if I use my calculator to find a trig function, the, the angle that I'm using is in radian mode. Okay, so let's do one of these, tangent of 5.717. So just tangent of 5.17. And it's going to give us this value, negative 2.03. If I had my calculator in degrees mode, it would be like this um, mode change to D. Okay, now what is tangent of 5 point, tangent of 5.17? You see, it's a different value. So it's important if you have the correct mode. If it's asking you to use the radian mode, you need to Otherwise, your answer will be wrong. And uh, the same for the other problem, secant. I know that there is no button defined for this, but secant is 1 over cosine. So 1 over cosine of 1.39. This is what I'm going to enter into my calculator to find it. And again, the same story here. I have, let's say, this one. Theta is equal to r cotangent of this value. So it's basically cotangent negative 1 of this value. Cotangent negative 1 is tangent negative 1 of 1 over 3.812. So that's how you calculate. Okay, so this was our problem uh, that I wanted to go over with you. I'm going to leave the rest for you to practice. Have a great day.